So as you probably know, Fedora IoT images are official Fedora images that use the OS3 technology. And OS Build Composer is a web service for building custom operating system artifacts. So this means, uh, for example, virtual machine images, but also OS3 commits. And you can deploy OS Build Composer locally and it is built, uh, it is based on OS Build, which was presented at DEF CONF last year. And you can find a link in these slides. Now, I will very briefly introduce uh, OS Build Composer itself. So as I said, it is a web service for creating uh, customized operating system artifacts. And uh, in order to uh, specify the customization, you need to create something which we call a blueprint. And you can see very simple example of a blueprint here. It's a TOML file. And in this example, I have created one user with name test and password password. But you can also install additional RPM packages or enable systemd services and uh, a lot of other customizations. Now, uh, Christian will talk about OS3. Okay, what is OS3? Um, the tagline of OS3 is like Git, but for file system trees. And that means that basically all the stuff that is stored in a repository is content addressed, very much like Git. And then uh, a commit in such a repository is basically a complete file system tree. So you, you basically get to a commit in if you have a complete file system, root file system tree, like your normal Fedora installation, for example, and then you run an OS tree commit command on that tree, and it will put all the files very much like a git, com git commit command, like put all the files in one, you know, git atomic commit that belongs together. Uh, and then you can have multiple ones where um, uh, there's a previous commit is referred to as a parent very much like in uh, Git as well. And then if you want to actually use such a commit, you have to create a deployment, which is basically a, as in Git, a checkout of that commit, um, plus a kernel that is contained in the commit and a bootloader. But obviously you also need some state, um, which is, um, contained in, in uh, Etsy and var. And then in this checkout that you do to save space, you don't actually, uh, as in, in contrast to Git, you don't actually create copies of the files, but what happens is that you create hard links into the repository. So all the files on your file system are actually hard links into the same file in the repository, um, which obviously only makes sense if the files and the file system is read only, otherwise you could, you know, uh, edit the files and then you would host up your commit, which you don't want to. So this whole thing basically assumes that you have an immutable system image that is self-contained. And then very much as in with Git, you know, if two commits contain exactly the same file, you can share the same file because you just get another hard link into another you know, repository. And then between deployments, what you share is uh, the state that is in Etsy and var. And if you like switch from one commit to another, there will, there will be a three-way merge between old state and etsy new state and etsy and the configuration that you have made to the files yourself um, one thing that is very cool about rpm os3 is that it allows you to layer specific packages on top of your base image because you know if your base image is immutable uh, how do you get additional software on top of it well there's this feature of layering that you know, in the newest version of RPM OS3, you can even apply it live before you had to actually do a reboot. Um, and obviously, the other uh, feature is you could use is uh, flat packs on containers. Um, and the big, the two big feature that OS3 gives you compared to a traditional system is that you have this immutable system images, and you can do atomic updates because when you when you basically switch to a new commit, what will happen is that you prepare a new deployment. And then only on reboot, when you reboot into the new system, you will actually reboot into this new deployment. And if something goes wrong, then you can easily just revert to the previous commit, to the previous deployment, 
which is exactly in the state as it was before. And in F Fedora IoT, there's even a feature called Green Boot, which uh, does boot checking. So like you make a new deployment, try to boot into it. Uh, we will try three times to boot into the system if it doesn't work. So if, if uh, the Green Boot success target from system D is not reached, it will automatically select the previous deployment uh, as the next boot operation. So after on the fourth boot try, you will actually end up automatically in the previous commit if the new commit does not actually deploy properly. Anyway, that's a brief overview. <laughs> Back to Martin. Yes, thank you. And so I will show a quick demo. This demo is a little bit more complicated than creating a VM image and simply booting it. Because in this demo, I will create an OS3 commit and then I will create an HTTP server that will serve this commit in an OS3 repository. Then I will need to download the Fedora installation ISO and run the ISO in QMU and finally configure Anaconda to install the commit. So as you can see, the demo will be quite long. So first of all, I need to uh, make sure that I'm creating uh, the commit for the right uh, Fedora release. OS Build Composer can at the moment only create OS3 commits for the same Fedora release that the host system is using. So in my demo, I'm using Fedora 33 and I've also created a blueprint. As you can see here, I want an additional user in my system and I want uh, the fish package to be installed. Now I can use the composer CLI tool to push the blueprint into OS Build Composer. And I can start a compose using the compose start uh, command and uh, name of the blueprint as an argument and also Fedora IoT commit, which is the name of image type that we use for Fedora OS3 commits. And you can also monitor the status of your running compose using composer CLI compose status. And once the compose is finished, you can download the OS3 commit inside of a tarball using the composer CLI compose image command. And you need to specify the UUID of your compose. So now we have the OS3 commit inside this tarball. So next we need to download the installation I saw for Fedora 33. In this case, I will use the Fedora net install I saw. And I will create a configuration for Anaconda. As you probably know, uh, you can uh, create a kickstart file that will instruct Anaconda what to do in order to install the system. So uh, I will not describe the whole kickstart file, but on the last line, you can see the OS3 setup command, which specifies where to look for the OS3 commits or the repository and what to download from it. If you are wondering uh, where the 10.0.2.2 IP address comes from, it's because I will use QMU to boot the VM. And this is a special IP address that you can use to reach the host system. Okay, now that I have the commit, 
and I have the installation ISO and the kickstart file, I need to serve the OS3 commit using some HTTP server. So my first idea, of course, would be to use something very simple, for example, the Python 3 HTTP server. Unfortunately, uh, OS3 produces a lot of a lot of requests and uh, the built-in Python HTTP server cannot handle the load. So what I will do instead is that I will create a container that uh, will run HTTPD and I will place the OS3 commit and the kickstart file inside this container. So as you can see here, I have the Docker file and the Tarbo and the kickstart file in a single directory. And I use Podman build to create the, the container. Now I can simply run the container and bind the HTTP port to port uh, 8000. Now I open and now I open uh, another tab in my terminal emulator and I need to create a disk image. Uh, what we, in, uh, yes, so previously I downloaded uh, the installation ISO, but that's not a disk image. Oh. You need to create a disk image uh, separately so that uh, you can install the new system to it. So I'm using uh, the QMU IMG command to create a disk image for my for my VM, and I want to create, for example, five gigabytes uh, disk, and then I can use QMU system x86 to actually boot the VM. And as you can see in the command, I specify the Fedora net installation ISO as an argument and also the disk image. Now, when I hit enter, I will see this, uh, uh, this screen. This is the standard uh, booting screen. And now you need to interrupt the installation process and you need to move focus on the install Fedora 33 line and then you hit tab. Once uh, you do that, you will see the grab command line. And can you see my uh, pointer? Yes, perfect. <laughs> and as you can see here, I specify the location of the kickstart file that is available from the running HTTP server. Now, when I hit enter, Anaconda will automatically download the kickstart file. And I specified the, the OS3 repository and commits in the kickstart file. So the installation will happen automatically. So once this is finished, I will see my customized Fedora IoT image. And as you can see here, I can log in using the user test and uh, the password password. But I forgot to create a home directory for my user. So Bash complains that it does not exist. And I can also make sure that fish is installed and fish is complaining even more about the fact that I have forgot to create a home directory. But as you can see, uh, the user is there and the package is there as well. So we have successfully created a custom Fedora IoT image. Now back to Christian. So what are the current features that we are supporting? I mean, the first thing is obviously uh, the customizations that you can do via the blueprints. 
like uh, creating users, the call and time zone and others. There is a documentation somewhere that you can look up. And then um, very recently we added support, which is uh, not yet released so that we can create uh, a commit directly in a container with the web server. Basically the step that Martin showed where uh, he manually creates a container via a Docker file, we can now directly natively do. So we get the container with the commit directly from um, OS build and composer. And then also the last step that is a bit tedious so that you have to download the net install instead of installer and then manually specify the kickstart that you created on the command line. We also can now create boot ISIS ourselves and uh, have the OS tree commit directly in the installation image so that when you create the bootloader, uh, the boot ISO, you can get it, uh, use it on, um, on this image file that Martin created as well and it will automatically install the commit without any intermediary web server or something needed. Okay, next slide maybe. And there's a bunch of features that are missing. Like one obvious one is that for currently it's only x86-64 supported. Uh, so ARM would, would be nice. And also um, currently we don't support uh, making raw or QCAR images based on commits. I mean, OS built the low level tool can do it, but we haven't wired the bits up into Composer. Um, so this is also something that if somebody wants to help out, could jump in. Um, and then uh, what also is currently a bit cumbersome is the whole um, infrastructure around commits. It's not very, you basically end up with like either an install commit and then in order to create updates, you have to somehow like look up the commit ID yourself and it's, it's a bit cumbersome. And then maybe there would also be, you know, room for more customizations. All right, I think that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so it's time for a Q and A section. So if anyone has any questions, uh, put them in the chat or Q and A section. Uh, so far one question from Dan Chermak and it says how hard would it be to split up the Ostery image image generation out of OS build so that other image builders could use it too I mean there is a there's a tool called RPM OS tree that uh, and which is the same thing that you manage the, the OS tree installation with the RPM OS tree with and it can also take uh, um, create these commits based on a thing called a tree file that you might look up. But for S build itself, um, the, the the way we support creating the OS trees is quite deeply integrated in in OS build. Like OS build is super flexible. We can create uh, you know all sorts of artifacts. And the way the way OS build the low level tool works is that we have a bunch of stages that are run one after another and they work on the file system tree. So there's an RPM stage that installs the RPM and then there's like the user stage that creates the user and, it, and then there's a few stages that prepare the tree for the RPM commit, uh, for the OS tree commit and then there's an OS tree commit stage. So um, like ripping this out and making it available for some other image builder would basically mean you re-implement all of this. So, but OS build is really a low-level tool. Maybe you can just integrate OS build itself into other image builders if you wanted to do that. Okay, there is another question from James. Uh, can the customization include using Python bit to install Python modules? Yeah, so if the Python bit module is packaged in RPM, you can install it but we don't support uh, installing uh, raw Python modules using OS Build Composer. So yeah, that's probably it. Okay, we have another questions uh, from Benjamin Block. How hard is it to add custom modification to the image that are not uh, packaged in RPM? Is that possible at all? Depends on what kind of customizations you mean, like files or, or I mean, there's the, the, the low level is always, a, there's always this sport between 
what OS built a low level build tool can do. And there's lots of room for making customizations there. But then the question is, you know, what composer, which is the thing on top that actually knows how to, in, uh, you know, how to make a Fedora image, for example, what goes into it and uh, how that can be customized. And there we don't support that many things because, you know, we want to, people not make like mess up the, the system too much, or maybe we haven't even just thought of some of the customizations that are needed. So if you have some pressing ideas or so, then maybe come to us at the bug tracker, issue tracker and file them. And another question from Dan Shermark uh, that says, so OS build is the low level tool invoked by OS build composer. Yes. So OS build is like, you know, we always say it's the, it's basically assembler. That is, uh, you give it a manifest and the manifest contains, it's, it's a JSON file and it contains everything to produce the image. And if you run it twice, it will produce the functionally the exact the same image. I mean, obviously there's some differences because time steps and tools, you know, like RPM, whatever, you know, sometimes create files. And so the time steps of the files will really differ, but you know, the image, if you, you know, run the manifest, the same manifest twice will basically produce functionally this, the very same exact, uh, image and it supports all sorts of things including like os3 commits or you know queue cows and stuff and then uh, the knowledge how to make a fedora image and the knowledge how to make a rel for edge image or a rel image or a queue cow image this is uh, basically how to plug the stages together to make a, a os variant out of this this lives in composer which is providing this web service and queuing and worker management and all sorts of high level functionality on top Okay, and we have another question. Uh, does OS Build Composer have any relationship with Core OS Assembler by James Pauley? Uh, so far, not. <laughs> um, I mean, we we are in contact and uh, in talking to Colin and the group around there, Build Cosa, and there is some efforts to maybe like share some bits and pieces and uh, maybe you know streamline the two things together a bit more. Um, but so far, uh, there is no, like, there are no bits shared so far, not yet. <laughs>